people, this is Karen with Ali Yoga Wellness, and today we have attorney Nicole Compton. Some of you know her better as Nikki, like I do, so <laughs> just Nikki, just Nikki. Uh, but uh, she is here today with us in um, the chair yoga segment. She's in the chair so that we can uh, talk about meditation as medication because we have a lot of stress in our life and it shows up in our thoughts, which in turn shows up in our bodies. We become diseased and we just don't want that abundance in our life. The Lord uh, promised us an abundance in life, but it's like somewhere along the line, we need to know we want the good abundance, okay? So uh, meditation will help us reach that. So here with um, Lord's Temple Wellness today, we'll have Nikki to talk about how meditation and medication <laughs> is in her life. So Nikki, what do you have to say about medication first? Well, I can say the medication is there, and I'm working on the meditation part. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've never tried to hide it. I'm very transparent about mm -hmm. everything in my life. Mm -hmm. And so my first year of law school, I was diagnosed with lupus. Mm -hmm. And with lupus comes a lot of other stuff. Right. I always right. say as a Christian, I don't claim it. It's not my lupus, mm -hmm. but I do have to live with that right. diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Um, and so even this week, I went to the doctor about medication mm -hmm. for mental stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with lupus diagnos diagnosis, um, it causes issues in your clarity as well as fatigue in your body and other right. things. So there's a thing called lupus brain fog. Mm -hmm. And so it can resemble ADD or ADHD. Uh -huh. And a lot of people getting COVID are realizing that they can't put two and two together. They feel like they're in early Alzheimer's and things like that. Right. That is similar to what I experience um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Ooh, okay. And so for the last few years, I've either been on Adderall or Concerta mm -hmm. in different doses, trying mm -hmm. to figure out... Um, how to make it through that. Right. Because prior to that, I was just self-medicating with caffeine. Right. I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And that was my only way to focus and to be able to make it through my day. Mm -hmm. The meditation part, <laughs> my, my, the love of my life, he keeps telling me, you know, you should really consider alternatives. And I, anybody who knows me knows I don't like taking medication. Mm -hmm. I try to find supplements or change my diet or change what I do with my body mm -hmm. to cope. And, right. and, and it's been a blessing to me because um, I don't have to take as much medication as other people do, but I'm looking for something that can finally supplement and or replace the medication I take on a daily basis right. to deal with this. Okay. So the Adderall, what is its function? What function is it replacing for you? Uh, for me, it helps me as an attorney and as a um, business legal coach and a professor. I use my brain for everything I do. I don't, you know, I don't have like a factory job where I'm using my body a lot. It's my brain. So when my brain doesn't function right, then it's frustrating. So what ends up happening, um, I can't think clearly or some days I'll sit at the computer and it seems like I'm sluggish and I'm getting nothing accomplished. And then, you know, with the, when the Adderall does kick in mm -hmm. or before the Adderall, when I would, you know, five hour energy and a Red Bull to go, it's like my brain would come on and where it would, where the same kind of stimulant medication would make other people jittery uh -huh. and things like that. It would make me very clearly focused and I would be very productive. Uh -huh. That's when my, right. I would write my books and my best right. work would happen. So. so I thought so. I, I haven't studied any kind of medicine or uh, needed any, uh, but I thought that's what Adderall does. It sometimes calms the person down. If, that's, and if, if you have the diagnosis. If okay. If, if that's you the use it as that, a street drug, it's going to Yeah, gonna, yeah you know, okay. Stimulant. Because it is a medicine is a practice, mm -hmm. and it is to see how this person is affected by 
what we generally do. Right. Now that's my lump sum. No, that's the truth. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it affects everybody. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like Adderall for you would do the same thing that medica- meditation would do. Those words are really, really closely related. You have to look at the roots <laughs> somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, because we are to renew our mind, we are to have clarity of mind, we are to be able to do this on our own and meditation <laughs> is uh, one of those tools that would help you do that. I would and say then, as a Christian, because I know you are as well, mm-hmm. the Bible talks about think on these things. Mm-hmm. And so when I think of that, or it says meditate actually right. on these things. Right. So, it, I mean, your body is designed by God to be self-containing and to heal itself. Mm-hmm. We have everything that we need. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm excited. Right. About today. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, and even if you look at the word healthy, it, if you split it up into two words, it's heal thy. Hmm. I love so that. heal thyself. As an attorney, yes. words are my best <laughs> <I know>. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I, I believe in uh, doctors also. They are here for a reason. So once the body has reached its capacity to heal thyself, then you reach outwardly for the doctor. I don't put down doctors whatsoever. Yeah. They are needed. They are here and they've been here. Yep. So with meditation, what I have learned is that meditation is a tool. There are different forms of meditation. The first one being to understand that your mind is an entity and you tell it what to do. Yep. My first experience, your I didn't body. Yes. I didn't know it was before I'd even studied meditation. I just realized I couldn't get to sleep and I was tired of the insomnia and I realized that my mind was just like, well, we got to do this and you know, oh, chatter, that, chatter, 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 With the Adderall, mm-hmm. because it's a stimulant mm-hmm. and my mind gets so clearly focused, I have the insomnia as a side effect of the Adderall. Right, <laughs> right. Because uh, I can't yeah, shut it down. Right, right. Then yeah. I had to take Take something else to, to go to sleep. My medicine needed medicine. That's you what I can say. Uh, so, so re- when I realized I didn't want this medication to help me get to sleep, I never had to take meditation. Medication. Um, I started talking to my mind, and I told it to go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. You got I, dominion over mm-hmm, your body. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, I was awakened. You know, because it was the next day, and I'd had a good night of sleep. And it was so profound that I realized how I got to sleep. Yeah. And I continued doing that for a few nights until I didn't have to do it anymore. And the- science says that your body, your voice um, activates your cells. Your cells physically respond to your voice and the vibration of your personal voice. I truly believe it because I That's have changed design. my mindset. Therefore, my voice changes my inner voice oh my goodness it's just so wonderful so i just want to uh we'll go over some of the meditation we'll actually go through the meditation later but i want to tell you that first i began talking to myself and myself answered by following what i was telling it to do the next thing i did was the i am affirmations and it is looking in the mirror saying, I am beautiful, I am smart, I, those yeah. I ams, whatever it is you want to be. And then the next one was to follow that all important, well, I'm going to go back to that one. The next one was music, is following music, just let yourself just flow with a nice little music that you can just let your mind just fly on the wings of. And then the next one actually is listening to your breath and to release yourself of thoughts just completely or 99.9% because you do have to train yourself to do it and your mind, give your mind time enough to respond is something that you want to continuously do 15 minutes in the morning and you get as far as you can get in 15 minutes with any of those types of meditation and then you're done and you're off to have your day. Can I add one thing? Mm-hmm. My sister was telling me about that 15 minutes is 1% of the day. Mm. 
you deserve mm-hmm. to give yourself, if nothing else, 1%. I like so that. So 15 minutes is deserved. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Understand that you are deserving. Right. <laughs> you are deserving. 15 minutes a day. So we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, um, the physical yoga, the chair yoga. And as you know, we start out with our tissue paper cleaning our nostrils okay so we'll spare you us blowing our hunkers <laughs> for you but go ahead and get yours and just clean your nostrils and make sure you dispose of it uh nice and as you should and um we'll meet you back in the chairs okay okay so i feel like i want to scoot over I want to get close to Nikki. Right. Okay, so we're going to do about 15 minutes worth of chair yoga. to, uh, And we're going to start with our hands, okay? Because uh, Nikki is at a desk. She's on the phone. She's working with her mind. And some people crack their knuckles. Do you, Nikki? Sometimes. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's a relief. So right now, because we know there's prayer, change, prayer changes things, let's start with the prayer position. Pushing your hands together. You're sitting near the edge of your chair. And you're lifting up through your spine. Pull your shoulder blades closer together and your chest should move out a little closer to your thumbs. The heels of your hands, if you can move them down to be more even with your elbows, you'll feel how your shoulders have really kicked in. Those muscles have kicked in, right? Right? Okay, and we want our ankles right below our knees. So bring your knees a little closer. Good, 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 good. And push strongly into your hands and feel how the prayer hands are changing your shoulders. Okay, (laughs) good deal. Now from there, we're going to place one hand on our heart and one hand on our belly, our heart of emotions and our belly of courage and together we will do our three breath practice breathe in you're welcome to close your eyes and imagine your lungs just filling with great air and then exhale and you're pulling your navel in as your lungs collapse right in and then breathe in big belly big lungs and then exhale. Feel the relaxation moving around your shoulders. Elbows are coming closer to your body, pulling your navel in. Let's do one more for good measure. Breathe in. And out. Good. Does it matter if you do it from your nostrils or your mouth? Nostrils are great. From your mouth, you, you're cooling yourself down. And we're, we're about to heat it up. So I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> but good question. So uh, with Ali Yoga, it's an acronym for As Love Inspires. However, we also pay honor to Muhammad Ali, the Louisville hometown hero. And we named some of the poses after him. Right now, we'll go into our butterfly wings. Just our arms are beside us. And we inhale and take our arms up. And we're floating like butterflies. Your wings, your arms, your movement connects with your breath. So the down swings of the wings is on the exhale. So now let's inhale and ride the breath. And exhale. And you can tell how the connection between your body and your move, your movements and your breath have been made because your soul feels more relaxed. Okay? Good. Good. Now just keep your hands down and even hold on to the chair and move so that forward on your chair so that you feel your sits bones. The bottom of your skeleton are on the chair. Most of your thigh is off the chair. And another motion (laughs) that we named for Muhammad Ali is the, um, I couldn't remember the name of it, but the name of it is the Ali Shuffle, okay? So we're going all the way down to the feet now. So pat your feet. 
pat, 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 pat. We know there's that prayer changes things. We also know that there's healing in the blood. So what we're doing here with our feet patting is raising the blood flow and sensation to our consciousness. It's always going on. You can move one foot forward. Just make it as fun as you want to, okay? You can cha-cha-cha. You can do whatever you want to. I just want you to get that blood flowing so that... And I hear it like get back up. Sting. Sting. Like I know, right? I, try, I take out the sting. <laughs> so go ahead and as you stop right there, you feel the sensation of what's going on all along is that blood flow. You feel it in your toes, Nikki? And usually you can feel it from this point up to your knees because then your knees uh, kind of tingle. Uh huh. They tingle, and because the anatomy bends, the sensation lessens. But we'll feel it later, further up our legs. So we uh, now we have our fun socks on. <laughs> we can keep the boys. <laughs> uh, but we're lifting our toes now, not our foot, just our toes, giving them a nice reach up toward our knees. And then exhale and bring them down. But pick up your heels and walk. Just slide your foot back for, toward you and really press through those heels. I got it. I think you wear heels, don't you, Nikki? Have you been wearing them lately? Yes. No, I wear COVID. I don't get to right. So I got all these pretty heels in the closet. I know. I, I understand. So we need to uh, make sure we can take care of our arch and if you can feel your arch here from being in our pretend heels <laughs> uh, you can feel it's getting a nice stretch or nice workout and that's very important so now we're going to sit back in our chair so that we can pick our legs up and circle our feet it's important that our ankles are nice and flexible and movable and strong. They really get uh, flexible from being strong and then circle the ankles the other direction. And for somebody with low blood circulation, mm -hmm. from this, this actually feels great. Good, good. Now I can uh, tell you, I, we talked before the session, one thing you can do to get your legs up high and get that blood flow going is to put your legs up on the wall. We might do that after session. Okay. <laughs> Show you a few things. Okay, so here we are. Bring your feet down. We're going to do some twists now. So let, we're going to face this way. You can do that as well. So you see the chair back is behind us. Again, we're going to sit closer to the edge of the chair. Pull your abs in. Lift up through your spine. And now... Just turn toward the chair. I'm going to keep looking at it. Put one hand on each side of the chair as it will naturally go. Inhale, lift up through the spine. Move this, the back shoulder away from the chair. Move the other shoulder toward the chair. You're doing it with the lifted spine and look over the back of your shoulder. Your arms are not doing the work. They're holding you in place, but you're not wrenching yourself around, okay? Good. Belly in. Only turn your head over the front shoulder, the other shoulder. And now unwind through your shoulders. And it'll unwind your waist as you make your way down. So we're going to the other side of the chair. You're welcome to stand up and get over there, or you're welcome to... Scoop and make Scoop. your way over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the edge. On the edge. Again, you're looking for your sits bones to be on the uh, near the edge of the chair, the frame of the chair. You want to be nice and solid. And so if you feel like your chair is tipping over, sit back. Okay. First, do no harm. Yes. Okay. So now we're uh, reaching for the sides of the chair. Go ahead and inhale to lift your spine from your waist instead of your shoulders. So lift from your spine. Mm -hmm. And now move this arm away from you. Good. And this arm to the chair. And it's with and it's your core muscles that are doing the turning. And turn your head this way as best as you can. And you're even turning your eyes. Look as far that direction as you can as well. So because your eyes have muscles, look. 
down, only turn your chin over the front shoulder, release your chair, and square it up. Okay? So now what we're going to do is a back bend. Let's practice. Let's let our back know that we're going to do it, okay? So we've done a little twist to get that flexibility in it. Now we're going to put our hands on our knees and on the, uh, do a cat-cow in the chair. And the way we do that is to hold your knees, knee caps, and pull your chest forward by pushing your shoulder blades into the spine and really going around the spine. Okay, so that you're arching through your back. And then we're going to exhale and pull our belly in, pull our chest in, still holding on to our kneecaps. And this is the cow. This is the cat. This is the angry cat. You can put your chin down, pull your belly in, keep pulling through your knees as you go back to the cow pose. And pull your shoulder blades back. Now let's take the chin up. And exhale the chin down as we ex exhale our chest and belly back. And go ahead and just come up to sitting and roll your shoulders. One at a time. I've kind of fallen in with the music. So you can fall in step with the music, okay? Find your beat. <laughs> we're made of beats, <laughs> the heartbeat. So uh, we're walking, we're at the edge of the chair. We're about to back bend. You're welcome to do it with us. You're welcome to watch us. We'll be there for a few seconds. <laughs> but you can catch up. So we're holding on. You ready? You're going to hold on to the back, the side, the arm, wherever okay. you're going to hold on. And walk yourself down. Your hand, your body has intelligence to help you do this. And now our arms are over our head. And our legs are outright. Oh, and I hope that feels good, Nikki. It does. After this work that we've already done, reach your fingers. Your fingers are reaching for the wall on the floor, where the wall and the floor meet. You're only going to pick up your arms now to bring them down as far as they will go, touching your thighs. And then inhale and bring them back up to where they were. You're stretching through that belly. Walk your legs out, walk your arms out. And now, as if someone is picking you up by the wrist, go ahead and move your arms like you had before. But try to keep your back down, kind of try to keep your feet down. We're on our way up. As you reach up, now my feet come up. <laughs> Did your feet come up, Nikki? Come up, Nikki. <laughs> and just make your way up to sitting. So, um, if you need to, when you're coming up, you get to where your feet are coming up. Should you grab? To if you can, seat? yeah. If you, yeah. If you need to, that's a great, great way to modify your. Because if you don't have the strength, yeah. Yeah. So now, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because we're getting stronger. So now we're getting our feet separated, our knees separated, sit back in the chair a little bit, and we're going to put our hands out. Let's start up here. Let's start up here. Let's get more movement going. Pull in your belly, and now as you exhale, you're reaching for the wall. Reach way out for the wall. Look up, look up, look up. Take it up. Look up, look up, look up, look up, look up. And down. Floor. Chin down. Now fingers are walking forward, and you should feel that in your low back and your knees. You don't want them to collapse, so even turn your toes out. So your knees are walking from you. Good. One hand on your knee, the other hand on your knee, and come on up to sitting. Okay, we're going back down, and let's see. Can you touch? You can touch the floor. I've never picked over. But touch the floor with your left hand. Right up under your nose. Maybe bring it back a little bit. Good. And now your right arm, we're reaching up for the sky. Reach back, 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 back. Look up to your fingers. Follow your fingers from the up position as you bring the hand down. And you're going to switch positions with your hands and your eye is going to coordinate 
with the other hand and finger and reach up. And if you were in person with me, like Nikki is, and I would show you some adjustments because we're looking for alignment. Your body is aligned in a certain way, but God said it should be. So reach forward just a little bit. And then, can you touch me? Yeah. Feel that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Now you come back down, but put one hand on each knee. And now let's move one shoulder to the center. You might be familiar with this and some of your exercise classes. And then you inhale yourself up so that you can do the other shoulder. And then you come on back up again. And now we're going to turn to the front and we're going to call this a session. Okay? You good? I I am. Am. Okay. I'm almost like me. I thought you were slipping off that no, chair. I don't want it to end. <laughs> Where we're going to go into the meditation portion and you are really going to like this. You are going to tell me how Meditation changed my life <laughs> because uh, what we're going to do is focus on where we feel our blood flow, where we feel our breath, and that's first in our nose, okay? We're accustomed to it and in our chest, so go ahead and breathe in, but also realize that I'm just going to point, <laughs> that it's traveling up your nostrils, up to your center of your forehead and is actually going to the scalp and out into the atmosphere okay and then as you exhale it's reversing its motion so let's do that for a few breaths close your eyes and feel that sensation breathe in feel your nostril feel the travel and then exhale and it reverses and exhale Okay, now let's go all the way down to the toes. Just lift the toes up again like they were. And you'll feel that blood flow strengthen and come to your consciousness. So now we're going to understand that our body is a whole breathing apparatus, not just our lungs and diaphragm and that respiratory system. So now go ahead and put your toes down and you should feel more sensation in them. But if you don't, you will as we consciously breathe. So think of your toes this time when you breathe. So close your eyes. Think of your toes as you begin your ex inhale. You can lift your toes if you want to and you feel your breath, your body movement. Just reach all the way up and then when it connects with the nose, it will continue the breathing as we know it and then as you exhale reverse it all the way down to your toes again from the toes as you breathe in lift your toes this time and just turn your whole body on with your breathing the whole physical armor of God and then exhale so you know you can feel your breath all over your body it travels through your body not just your lungs and that respiratory system. Now we're going to breathe again and understand that it's our prayer that is moving throughout our body and then the prayer is answered. So if you think of it like that, as you're breathing in, you're reaching and asking God for relief of some kind. So let's just make it happiness. You're reaching up. It's moving up to God's ears. God says yes, and then as you exhale, you're pulling the energy of that yes into your body, throughout your body, and you can share it with everybody. Breathe in from your toes, through your body, through the crown, up to the Savior. Exhale, without me speaking, go ahead. Breathe your own pattern. Give yourself a little smile. And we're about to finish with that breathing. Open your eyes. Bring your hands in prayer position. You're welcome to do your meditation in prayer position. We end our class with the divine in me 
recognizes and respects the divine in you and your place in the universe. Namaste and amen.